Okay, so today we're going to make a snake out of an old rasp. This time we won't cut off as much of the tang as you can see. We leave about three quarters of an inch, 20 mil, and then fold it back on itself. This is going to form part of the head. You might notice this video is a little bit speeded up, but uh, I needed to do that to get it all in. Right, we're doing what we did with the handle on our axe using the ball pane hammer and a piece of hang line fold it over we want to end up with a, a tube we'd normally probably do this under the fly press but as I've got no one else to film it for me I need to do it uh, where you can see it so this is the next best way it takes a few heats as you can see curls up into a bit of a banana. Make sure you're working your hammer on both sides quite evenly because what I want to aim to do is get the seam running evenly down the middle which will be the underneath of the snake. So bring it in from both sides. It's a bit erratic. That was a bit erratic. It's tough stuff, this rasp material. It's um, pretty high carbon steel and it's, it's, it's very tough to work with. And I'm bending it over. Actually, quite time consuming this one. It uh, really takes some going over a power hammer. I don't want to work too much on the middle. I'm going to keep the middle a little bit fatter if possible. It makes the body seem a bit fatter because the snakes are sort of slightly tapered from end to end. Now we're going to work on the head, tapering it down to a point from the top and both sides, but not from underneath. So it lays fairly flat at the bottom. Get rid of that. Finish that. Now what we're going to do is draw it down behind the head. Forming the neck. And so it takes some doing. It's, it's a pretty tough old stuff. Working back from the neck towards the centre of the body. Round it up again around the neck. And we go at the tail. Same sort of thing. Close it up. And then taper it out. Oh no, we're not on the tail, we're in the middle still. Just working from the other end. It's got a bit twisted. I'm saying about the seam, so I'm just straightening it back up again in the Device. Just try and keep that seam running down the centre of the underneath. 
not imperative, it just makes it look nicer when it's finished. Now we're going to start working towards the tail. Really giving it some towards the tail, thin it down a bit. To start with, what I'm doing is just sort of consolidating it, making the, sure that the seams have come together properly. Now I'll give it a bit on the back, try and paper it down a bit more without disrupting that seam down the middle if possible tidy it up a bit I wonder if I've got bad elbows Seems to take a long while. It does take a long while, but I'm a little bit fussy as well. I like to make uh, my jobs fairly smooth. I don't like to leave too many hammer marks in, so I perhaps take a bit longer than I should in smoothing things off. chisel mark in for a mouth, some nostrils, one left, one right, and some eyes, just for the centre punch, just give it a little bit of character. Now we'll start to, apart from dropping it on the floor, twist it around a bit, give it a bit of Lifelessness or life lifelikeness. Well, that might be easier using the horns. I'll figure out which way I want to bend it. really see from that shot but I have actually sort of flattened it slightly the, the snake it was originally quite a round tube but snakes aren't round um, so during the process I've actually flattened it down a bit made it sort of more oval so it's a uh, more lifelike shape Very lifelike from there, but let's see, she just had a bit of a bash. I don't come across too many snakes in this country, so I've not really got much of an idea of what shape I'm looking at, but just giving it a bit of a play. Brush up. Get some slag off. And that's about it. So if we can let you have a little look. The teeth on the rasp, this is formed bastard side out. 
actually gives quite a nice texture 